Uh, good afternoon, everyone. This is Gan. Do, do we need this? <laughs> yeah, it's for the video. <laughs> uh, this is Gan. Uh, Gan and Roses. Yeah, no spelling mistake there. It is Gan <laughs> and Roses, right? Um, I am Rose. This is uh, Victor. This is Hanifa. This is Lillian. Lillian, and this is Tara. Okay, and we are going to talk about uh, TEL at uh, UMS. Okay, um, so what we've done was uh, we've divided in it into, um, we were asked to do a SWOT analysis in this one. So let us, uh, it is always good to first of all look at our strengths. Whatever, whatever thing that we do, we have to look at the good parts of ourselves first. So we decided to, okay, what are our strengths in UMS? Okay. Uh, we wanted to see actually how um, uh, we can um, we can capitalize on something, but at the same time <laughs> that if we mismanage it, the very thing that can work for us can work against us. Oh, yes. yes, right. So um, now one of our big one of the biggest strengths of UMS is that um, the ac academic community is actually a very young community. It's a young, vibrant, um, energetic community. Uh, Prof Fong and I are the exception, actually. And <laughs> Dr. Jeff, okay? Uh, okay, we are on the young, kalau ada tiktokan di bawah kami, okay? Right, now, uh, when you have a young community, uh, by assumption, you become very adaptable at whatever is given to you. So that is a very plus point. And, uh, uh, linked to this is that um, there is uh, there would be a high percentage of digital natives here, so you won't have um, you won't have this brick wall actually. So whatever you throw at them, in all probability um, they will be able to take it. Okay, and then we have that support, environmental support for the uh, creation of a, a TNL. Uh, uh, technology enabled teaching and learning environment. We have the management support. They, it, uh, they are all for it. We have funding support, actually. Okay, uh, I'm not sure how much has been pumped into creating uh, a TNL uh, environment in UMS, but I'm sure I know that it is quite a, a lot of money. Yeah, and we have that infrastructure. So these are actually our strengths. Now, but at the same time. This very strength that we are looking at can work against us. It can become our very weaknesses if we don't know how to manage it, <coughs> if we don't manage it well. So if you look at the weaknesses there, at the same time that infrastructure is, so, is, is a strength, it can become a weakness because we have the money, so we build all this like uh, cable, whatever, and then there's poor internet connection. It does poor... <coughs> internet connectivity. And we are not quite sure why. why. What's happening? We want our classes to be like, oh, uh, now you go online. And then students say, but doctor, cannot, cannot access. Oh, or poor, poor reception. Okay, so sometimes they have to depend on their own data. Okay, and usually the data habits to them. Okay, <laughs> right? So, okay, and, um, okay, um, <coughs> and, a weakness can also be, um, uh, while we have a young, uh, vibrant academic community, we have the fossilized community at the same time. Okay, so, well, I'm sorry. Uh, it's, well, for, for one of a diplomatic term, okay, fossilized community who are so sad, okay, I'm trying to stop, uh, I'm trying to step from being fossilized into the young vibrant one, Lagunan. Okay, right. So there is, there would be a certain um, resistance to whatever change has been given to you. Um, why, why fix something that isn't broken? Okay, right. Uh, all this while, the whiteboard has worked for me. Why should I go into smart UMS? It's, it's taking too much of my time. Okay. Um, well. Uh, that's quite um, so um, and then uh, conservative teaching approaches as well okay and then you have uh, software and hardware limitations okay um, you have 
you have infrastructure that is provided, but you don't quite know what to do with it. Um, because maybe you're not familiar with it, or you have not been given adequate know-how on how to do it. Uh, like, for example, in a certain part of PPIB, you would have like language labs, computer labs, but not many people will be utilizing it because they're not quite sure how to do it, how to make full use of it, maximize it. Okay, and then there are just too too many or too much uh, uh, technology coming in. Okay, and when you learn something, tiba tiba ada version dua sudah. So you have to unlearn and relearn some more. And then when you learn version dua, ada version two point five already. So, okay, so you cannot keep up, or you 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 become tawarhati. So you stop. I never mind lah, biarlah. Go back to my, to my, to my WhatsApp lah. Never mind. Okay, right. Can I give to Tara opportunity? Um, I would like to add on about the overwhelming technology applications. Um, other than that, in terms of the um, lecture perspective, perhaps there's too many applications or technologies out there for them to explore, actually. You have Edmodo, you have a Com Comodo, whatsoever, <laughs> perhaps. Okay, um, what else do you have? Um, something that you can project from your laptop to the students' mobile phones as a projector, aside, aside from using the projector itself. Uh, what else? You have WhatsApp, social media, social networking sites, and a lot of websites as well. So there's a lot of teaching applications, um, group discussions applications as well. So there's a lot of things. So it becomes overwhelming for them. If they have five courses for this semester, different five courses use different applications, it's quite overwhelming for them as well. So it's, if, um, but then although they are digital native, perhaps it's quite burdensome perhaps for them to adapt Okay, um, in terms of opportunities here, we look into the external perspective of the opportunities out there, outside of UMS actually. So we have actually um, external support from the experts, like um, we've seen um, experts coming in to teach us blended learning, about using a smart, um, our LMS system. We have government support recently, um, they have been promoting and encouraging, for example, related to my course, Digital Entrepreneurship. That indirectly promote the students to use social media and also websites to enhance their learning so forth. They in, after they leave the university, they can actually adapt towards into doing entrepreneurship outside of UMS. And also NGOs. We have UNESCO encouraging everybody to actually incorporate technologies, not only technology applications in their teaching and learning. And aside from supports, we also have technology, the environment of technology, the ecosystem is very, um, it's really fast. And then if you see perhaps now we have Edmodo, perhaps next month we have Komodo perhaps. Okay, maybe next year we have different kind of um, technologies uh, in teaching and learning. Maybe um, now perhaps we are using web 4.0 way of doing teaching and learning. Perhaps in the next year, we'll be using Web 5.0, using robotics, perhaps. Okay, so it's quite um, dynamic environment technology. Um, but then, that opportunity itself can be becoming a threat, actually, for us. Um, with that environment technology, because I mentioned it's very dynamic, it's really hard to actually adapt to it. Um, from time to time. You really have to be, um, how do you say, update, be updated from time to time. You have to be adaptability, adaptability. For those who are not as fast as the others, perhaps they, they will be losing the race in adapting the technology, okay? So the, uh, the environment of technology is really dynamic. For example, social media. Last time, we don't have social media. Uh, we have social media for private users. Then we have social media for business users. Then when business keeps on using um, social media, they keep on posting, then the social media, Facebook, and also Instagram change the algorithm. They have to um, invest in ads 
to for making their posts uh, visible to their followers. So that also actually affect our students if they are trying to adapt into digital entrepreneurship, for example. That's related to my course. Um, in terms of um, technology as well, there's also an, an issue about privacy and confidentiality. If we adapt um, the uh, use of websites or social media in our assessments, if the, we ask them to create a Instagram and Facebook for businesses, for example, they can hack actually, um, there's a privacy issue that anybody from public perhaps, perhaps can see their things that they post on the content, okay? And also confidentiality, that also relates to the other th things in terms of hacking. That's part of the cyber crime. If hacking can ha happen anytime, anytime, they can hack an account of your student or your account as a lecturer. So the, that's in uh, issue of your privacy and confidentiality is bre being breached over there. And also, although you post, um, you can use technology to post your content, your slides, your um, augmented reality notes, for example. Um, these can be shared throughout their social networking. Their com they, because technology connect us really, really easily. It's at the fingertips of uh, um, the students, also the lecturers. So they can actually perhaps misuse your content. Or your students perhaps can actually misuse your, the other students' content to copy and paste and send to you. So that is one of the threats as well. Um, and the other one is a mechanism of disruption is where we have infrastructure in UMS, but then however, we are also connected with the outside of UMS. For example, if we, we have Wi-Fi here recently, for example, we have the fiber optic wire was um, there, there's a problem in the EC. So when that happens, if there's a problem there, we are affected as well. So this disruption is there. So that is one of the threat. Um, my opinion here is that um, we can actually use our strength to take advantage of the opportunity. For example, we have young lecturers and then we have high, um, we, we are teaching the Gen Z, Gen Z uh, community. They are very, very easy to adapt with technology and applications and so on. So with the young lecturers, we can actually um, use the technology that keeps on developing, uh, that is readily being used or available outside there. For example, in our teaching and learning, aside from using slides, we can also use different kind of way of teaching. For example, we can use Nearport application, project your slides in their phones, mobile phones. So they don't need to use your, um, print any slides. They don't need to search the slides in their laptops and so on. Okay, for example, um, that is teaching and learning. What about group discussions? We can actually um, promote, encourage them to use Trello to discuss in there. So they, there's no um, what are you, uh, uh, excuses for not having a WhatsApp group and so on. You can use Trello. And the lecture itself can be inside the Trello um, group. So that is one way you can assess your student having a meeting by not being there face to face with them. Another way, um, in your assessment, you can also put technology as well. So that is one way actually you can use your strength to adapt, uh, to take advantage of the opportunity with the dynamic environment technology. So um, perhaps my colleagues have opinions. Yes. <laughs> Um, any questions? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, before I start for the any question, I need to say it's one thing. So it, everything has pros and cons. We know how to balance things, the technology and the student experience. What I know is the student experience, we, we are using the technology to enhance for learning. But we have to see another set of perspective views, how we are enhancing the student experience also. So for example, yeah, you're using a Technology is fast, very, uh, we can say it's very cheap. So it's fast, cheap, and very effective. However, we don't know how to enhance the student experience. Sometimes it's just like spoon feed. You just pop up to the, uh, upload it. You don't know whether the student 
see or not see the, your, your, your lecture notes or your videos that you upload, how you close with your student, how you communicate with your student. You, maybe there will be a lack of something, they will enhance in something skill, but there will be lack of in communication skill. So when they're going to industry field, maybe they didn't uh, close to another people. They don't know how to connect with other people. They don't know how to make a socialize. They don't know how to make this communication skill. They don't know how to expose the, uh, the self to the employer or, or the, the, the staff and co-worker. They don't know how to do a group discussion. So balancing is the main point for, for this. And we have to empathy the experience of the student, like how we student motivate, how the student engage, and how the student enjoy really in the learning. So, any questions? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> what, what would be the main weakness uh, that should be addressed immediately? Um, I think one point is the lack of the software and hardware limitation, actually. For me, it's the software and hardware limitation. I think, like, um, what uh, Tara was explained just now, is poor internet connection. So um, what we what I found out is um, we have provide facility for the student, like we have a provide the lab, all the things, the hardware and the software, but sometimes the hardware being provided is not relevant for the subject or the courses that will be used for the hardware. For example, when I'm teaching a graphic design, but the hardware we provided is just a simple, didn't have any graphic cut for, for the, for the uh, laptop or the desktop, mm. it's like no main point for me to teaching the high quality of gamification and animation or some, something related to graphic cut. And something like software, um, we try to explore open source software. We try to find a, a open source software which is uh, more suitable for the student, which uh, no need to have any payment for the, for the software, and with friendly user. However, sometimes uh, what we get from the software is, uh, is not what we really want to learn from the software. So we have to find how the solution in the software and hardware limitation, and some of the internet connection. Yeah. <laughs> Normally, the opportunities are external. The threats are external. Yeah. The internal one within UMS are our strength and our weaknesses. Mm. So, how could we actually capitalize on these opportunities? These yeah. are very important, you know, mm -hmm. to come and uh, support and bring us higher and here to reduce the weaknesses. Yeah. Perform. Maybe uh, we need to. Um, maybe what we could uh, focus on will be um, at the initial stage is to for us to stabilize the TEL ecosystem in UMS with um, with support from outside agencies, yeah. So because uh, I I don't think we have the capability to do that ourselves, uh, stabilizing that ecosystem here, yeah. So uh, I personally, for one. Uh, believe that we need to bring in the expert. Yeah. 